going on YouTube? Mr. Football here, and we're back with a, another Homegrown Football Podcast episode. This is episode four, and today we're going to be talking about should youth football coaches be allowed on the field during the game? Um, and this is something that I just kind of thought up of today um, because I've had different scenarios. I've had different situations with this, and I figured it would be you know a good time to kind of share this information uh, and just kind of, you know, you know, what do you do if you've got a youth football team and then you go into a league or you go into a game and they don't want coaches on the field? And I've been in that situation. Um, and it, it's very weird what I've went through. And, and I can kind of give you guys some clear examples of why it's kind of odd sometimes. But basically what I'm talking about uh, is when, you know, you've got like a youth team out there and you might have like a fifth or a sixth grade team and basically the, the coaches, the youth coaches are on the field. Like you've got a coach standing behind the offense. Usually it's your head coach, uh, you know, and he's, he's given the, you know, the play to the, to the offense, giving it to the quarterback. They get in the huddle, break the huddle, whatnot. Or you've got a guy on defense on the other side um, and doing the same thing there. You know, I, I've, I've had it both ways. But when I first started coaching way back in 2014, um, my very first, you know, coaching assignment, th those of you that have watched this podcast, uh, know that I coached a youth football team, uh, and started out and that was my first, you know, true job my first, you know, real experience that I had, uh, with that. And what happened was, you know, we get into this league and during this league had a third and fourth grade age, uh, or, you know, age group and then a fifth and sixth grade age group. So we only had a team in the fifth and sixth grade age group. So, in the younger grades, you know, you, you would see the coaches on the field, but when they would progress through the league, when you get to the fifth and sixth grade league, uh, coaches were on the sideline, um, which, you know, I didn't really, you know, it didn't affect me either way, um, you know, to be on the, on the field or the sideline. But what happened was while this was going on, and this has been a common thing, like when you're in middle school football or you're a seventh grader, but coaches are on the field for the most part. Now, I will say this this year in particular, we were in a, a separate kind of a coaches run junior high and seventh grade league where we all kind of came together. Um, and there was kind of this one school that set up, you know, the entire league or whatever. Um, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we didn't, in those seven games of conference games, we didn't have uh, coaches on the field for our seventh grade. We might have been the first. And I actually believe, I believe we do now. I kind of think back about it. But um, when I first started out, it really wasn't a big deal. Um, you know, I would have my quarterback come over about to where the numbers are. I'd walk on the field a little bit, give him the play number. We had it on a wristband, so I just give him the play number. He runs it back in. Uh, we did signal just a little bit. Um, I wouldn't recommend signaling um, in youth unless that's what you do. Um, but we, we really didn't have much time to even work on that. So we had a couple signals in by the end, but, you know, it was really just for one, one or two plays. But um, what we did, and it really didn't, like, this didn't bother me at all. Like, you know, we were on the field um, or on the, on the sideline, it really didn't matter. But when I, and during my third year of this, and actually, I can remember back to my second year even, we played a team out of the conference league, and, you know, they had coaches on the field. So I was like, I'm going to jump out there anyway. And, you know, you can just see everything so much better. And as a youth coach, you know, and having the ability to talk to the kids, you know, in between plays, you know, kind of giving them a little feedback here and there while the game's going on, um, it's all good. And then, for the most part, my very last season of coaching youth football, like – that, that's where it was at, like seeing it all on defense, seeing it all on offense. Um, I had to get kind of creative how we did it. Um, and I can maybe do a more in-depth podcast about how you should kind of set this up because I think there's good ways to do this. And if you have some good volunteers, you have some assistant coaches, um, you, can, you can make a pretty good system of this. Um, and I think you can um, make it work. So that's kind of neat. Uh, and, and we'll, we'll, you know, and it was just such a good perspective, you know, just to see it from behind the offense and, you know, you could, you know, see the play develop a lot. It's, it's, 
And that's why I like the end zone camera, like, you know, the end zone angle, like when you watch film, you just learn so much more from the offensive side and the defensive side, you know, watching that, that up, that up close, that tight shot of the line. And, you know, it, it's good for, you know, the run game and stuff like that. Not so much in the pass game uh, because we pretty much just film the interior box, but um, regardless, it's such a, um, you know, I, I come down to, is it a good thing or a bad thing for coaches to be on the field? I don't think it really matters um, up to a certain age. I think once, I think seventh grade is really the last time where they probably need that. Because you're going to have kids um, that probably, you know, if this is their first experience in football, um, you know, this is their, basically their introduction uh, to where, you know, you may have a couple, you know, coaches on the field for like younger teams. Um, I think it's important, you know, you've got to at least get those guys lined up. They've got to know what to do. And so having them there, you know, as soon as they break the huddle, if they screw up, you can grab one of them. If he lines up, if a receiver lines up on the wrong side and you say, hey, uh, go, go get on the other side, you know, this is, you know, and, and then they, they learn easier that way because once they get out there and if you're screaming it from the sideline, you know, they're going to be freaking out, you know, and I, I've seen it both ways and it's, it's better if you have the coaches on the field. I, I like it as you know personally, but at some point, if you do if you do have sort of a, a a league and you've got several teams where you can work up and build on that, and then maybe by that sixth and that seventh grade year, they don't need you know the coach on the field, and you can have the quarterback run the offense, or you can have a Mike linebacker running the defense. Like you know, you can have all that set up. So it's a very it's a. It's not whether coaches should or shouldn't be on the field. Um, I think at certain age groups, I think it's essential, especially like if if we're going to sit here and talk about, you know, kids that are playing football, you know, at like age six and seven, like there's going to be kids out there that don't know what the heck they're doing. So it's probably best if there's a coach out there to kind of guide them in the right way. Um, I like it. I like it from the defensive perspective because I can – you know, sit back at about 20 yards and I can talk to my safeties out there. Um, you know, I, I try even in practice, I like to, I like to be behind the defense. If I can, if I can get somebody to signal the plays for me, like I want to be behind the, if I, I want to be behind the defense, like it, it's such a better angle for me to see everything rather than you see it from the side. Um, and I think as a coach, you learn so much more from seeing it from that perspective. Um, and th- what was funny was my very last game of, you know, coaching, uh, you, you, in the youth team or whatever, um, we, we played a pretty tough team and beat them. Um, and I, and I've got a full story on the, I've got like a story time basically on this, on this story. Cause it's a very memorable game for me. Um, but we, um, I'm not trying to, but the, the guy that was coaching the other team was like, Man, you were able. We we were trying to stop you from running the outside, and then you'd run inside, and then you know we'd clog it up inside, and then you'd run outside. And it's just like he's like, "You're doing a good job with calling plays." And I was just thinking, well, I was just pretty much, you know, and I didn't want to be, you know, a smart aleck about it, but I was just like, you know, I I see everything from back there, and you know, wherever I'm gonna run, wherever you're not. Like, I mean, that's it's simple. Um, you know, I'm not blown anybody's mind here with what we're doing like if, if you're going to load up the outside because let's be honest and if you got a cat that can run in youth football you know put his butt on a sweep outside because if they can't catch him you're going to score a lot of touchdowns and that was our philosophy um but you know a lot of teams would gear up on that and we'd run it inside so but that's those little things that you can see like behind behind the players and you can see where all those linebackers are lined up you can see where everything is and it's beneficial. So from a play caller's perspective, you probably want to be out there, um, you know, because at a certain level, like the kids probably can't give you that kind of feedback. They've already got so much going in their mind, you know, when they're out there. So they probably can't give you a lot of feedback on where players are positioned. If you have assistant coaches, you can have them help you in that way. But I, just from a play caller perspective, it's better to be on the field. Um, whether do I think it's right for the game that, you know, players, you know, need a coach out there. I think if there's a team and if you have a group of kids that are more advanced, 
um, and can, you know, really get out there and, you know, run the plays effectively and, and play well on defense. I don't think you need, you know, a coach out there. If you, if you, you know, if you're struggling with, you know, whether to be out there or not, I would venture to say be out there if you can. If your league doesn't let you out there, then try to find a way to, you know, get all those answers that you need, uh, you know, during the game. So you've got to kind of branch out. you got to give people jobs. You've got to have people helping you on that. So there's all kinds of different things you can kind of think about it. I just wanted to make a little short podcast to talk about this kind of stuff. I figured we would kind of come back another time and talk more about this and just kind of leave this there for you guys to kind of think about. Um, but what do you guys think? Do you think coaches should be – we're talking about youth football, um, you know, Pop Warner, Pee Wee, whatever you want to call it. But could, should coaches be on the field? You know, just a simple, you know, give me a little explanation why you think so. I gave you my perspective, why I like it. Um, but for the most part, that's all I want to talk about today. So we'll be back with another podcast next week. Thank you guys so much for watching this, and we'll see you next time.